Hey guys, my name is Nick. I'm a Microsoft Certified Expert Administrator. Create a lot of content for MSPs. And in today's video, I'm going to be showing you how to set up a compliance policy in Intune for Mac OS devices. This is one video as part of a series I'm doing to help you implement Intune across all device platforms. So I just wanted to show this to you here today. I'm in the Endpoint Manager Admin Center here. This is where you conduct everything as far as the management goes across all Intune devices. And I'm going to go ahead and click on Mac OS. Now, as a basic prerequisite to managing Macs, you do have to have an Apple MDM push certificate, which I covered in another video. This video is solely going to be talking about the compliance policy in general. So you can click on compliance policies here, click on create a policy, and we'll create one from scratch here. And I'm just going to go ahead and name it. And under the platform, you'll only have Mac OS from the dropdown. So there's only three options here with subset of settings that we can configure here. And this is saying that we want the Mac to be in this, this state to be compliant. This is important when you start to pair the conditional access policies around who can access your data. And if you have some that are powerful enough to prevent access on a non-compliant device, it really helps your security and compliance posture. So looking here, the first setting we have, device health, require system integrity protection. If you're not familiar with this, if you're not a Mac or Apple person, you're just beginning to do management for these devices, highly recommend you check this out. But basically, it's kind of like thinking of a jailbroken device, in my opinion, where there's some access at the root level that they don't want you to tamper with on their OS just for security concerns. And this is on by default, so somebody would have to go out of their way to turn this off on the device. So I would say that should be a required one that you would want to implement. As far as device property goes, you can define the min or max OS version and OS build version. This could be custom to you in the sense that you have some proprietary applications that require a certain level of OS due to security patches. You may want for security or compliance concerns to have a minimum OS version that you want to use for those features. In my opinion, you want at least 10.13 or higher as far as the OS goes, because what that does is it gives you a rotating key for the file vault, which is the encryption on the drive within um, the Mac OS itself. So I would put at least 10.13. So you can have that rotating key as, as frequently as one month automated. You could do it on demand, but to have it automated with one of the device restriction settings here in the profile configurations you can push out, I would want to have that as the minimum OS. As far as system security goes, you can define the password requirements. If you're complying to compliance regulations in the sense of HIPAA, you do want to block simple passwords, and I would just in general for security concerns, you want the minimum password length to be at least eight characters, in my opinion, all the way up to 16, following Microsoft standards in that particular case. For the password device, I would say it's alphanumeric, and for the non-alphanumeric characters, at least one here. So it's saying, hey, if you're not going to put in any number or letter what else can we put like the characters you see here and then the maximum minutes of inactivity before passwords required this one's extremely important for compliance regulations i would do at least five minutes here um, as the as a maximum anything below that kind of gets annoying for the end user and anything above that you start to get into concerns of security for somebody leaving their device uh, open in the event of them being off-site or in a remote location, especially since everybody mostly is in today's environment. For password expiration, you can define this. Um, you know, you could say it's nothing, for instance, or you could define 90 days, every 90 days. Usually as an MSP, I find you guys have uh, password policies already previously defined anyway. So it's usually something you can mimic there. HIPAA regulations state that you need to change it on a frequent basis um, just to, to comply with them and that you shouldn't prevent any reuse. So I would, um, you know, either put this really high, but if you put zero, it's going to tell you, you know, you have to do a value of one in 24. But this is saying that you can't use the same password you've used in the past X amount of times. So in some cases, you could just say five. Usually that gets them into the state where they're picking a new password anyway. 
Um, for encryption, definitely want to require encryption on the device. This is going to use File Vault on Mac OS devices. And you'll see here that will take you through if it's not enabled. It'll walk the end user through that if they do the self-enrollment through the company portal app. Device security, I would definitely want to enable the firewall. If you have your own personal firewall protection, you're deploying to the end device, it will pick up that as well too. You may want to leave this then and not configured because you know that you're pushing out the firewall protection. Incoming connections, um, if you hover over here, it says it's blocking all connections except those required for basic internet services and this will block all sharing services. So with Max, this is going to block that native screen share um, application that they have available in the remote connect abilities. Again, if you're using this and you're using an RMM tool to remote into a device like Screen Connect or anything like that, um, you're going to want to just keep this at blocked. And you can always go through and come back here if you find that there are certain things that you don't want to turn on. Stealth mode um, prevents the computer from responding to probing requests like it's saying here. So I like to have that one enabled as well personally. For Gatekeeper, this is allowing apps to be downloaded from certain trusted locations. Usually I recommend clicking on Mac Store, that Mac App Store and Mac App Store and identify the developers if you're enterprise level. If you select anywhere, this leads to some type of shadow IT in certain cases. In other cases, it can lead to untrusted applications that haven't been vetted by a higher power. So they're more likely to be malicious to the end users, potentially. So I typically choose this setting, but it could be anything you want there. So here is what the settings look like in the sense of the compliance policy there. Actions for non-compliance, I typically don't change this. Um, it's showing that you can mark the device non-compliant immediately. Usually that's going to you know, direct the end user to go ahead and change some of the settings on their device if it's not up to those standards, such as changing your password if it's not complex enough, or turning on File Vault for encryption purposes. The other methods you have available, you can send an email to the end user if it's not compliant to try to help them get, get up to compliant. You can retire the non-compliant device or you can remotely lock the non-compliant device. None of those I typically recommend doing. Then you can set a message template here and you can schedule a grace period. So you could say, okay, well, the action to be triggered as far as scheduling it to be non-compliant can be after three days. So they have three days to get this under compliance. Typically, I just recommend moving it to non-compliant immediately, just so you as the MSP can help them remediate. And just make sure that if you do that, you're not having conditional access policies that immediately block access to corporate data so that they're immediately getting blocked from everything. I mean, it's a good way to know that they're not able to, um, to get in and their device isn't compliant. But I would want to know, you know, in looking at it there, that they have a little bit of leeway there, not blocking your access to everything immediately. But again, twofold, if you're following HIPAA compliance, I really wouldn't want anybody touching my device who isn't following these settings. So just keep that in mind. I recommend this one. But you guys obviously have your own internal practices that you can follow and incorporate into this. I'll go ahead and click on Create. After you create anything in Intune, you're automatically asked to go ahead and assign it to at least one group. So as far as the properties go here, you can say all users, and that will just kind of encompass everybody. If you want to have a certain subset of users have different settings, maybe you have more strict password requirements or... Maybe you don't want to block your incoming connections for certain people. If you could scope this to certain users or exclude certain users from this as far as the compliance policy goes. You may have more restrictive policies for certain groups of users, but in general, to keep it simplistic in an SMB type of environment, I would say most of the time you're going to say all groups, all users in this case for compliance policy. And then you can save here and that'll apply. So once that's done, um, I'm going to go ahead and show you this as well too. This is one I had already previously pushed out to a Mac OS device I enrolled and it's got it showing that it succeeded going to those groups. 
you can look at status over here um, by device and by user as well too so you can see who's compliant with those particular pop policies and you can drill in there the other way you can see this under the devices section if you go to Mac OS and look at Mac devices and you click on this here you can see that it is in a compliant state and here um, we can go under device compliance and this is the built-in compliance policy it's basically just looking for a few things and making sure you have a policy defined and then this drills down into the settings that you defined in that particular uh, compliance policy so if it ever is in an incompliant state drill down here and then you can see why which one of these it's not meeting and that's how you can better direct the end user or potentially remote in yourself to help them out as well too if you are using an RMM tool. The biggest one that you'll probably see is if it's BYOD, encryption of data storage on the device. This is bigger because with File Vault, you can set up a device profile policy that it does encrypt the device, but if it's um, a personally owned device, you won't be able to see the recovery key in here. Um, but uh, if they do have their own personal encryption on that device, and you want to have access to the recovery key, you'd have to have them unencrypt it and then you re-encrypt it under the branch profile. But if it's not, it's gonna give them this direction to go and encrypt the device, which I'll go ahead and show you now. So on a Mac device here, we have the ability to see somebody who's enrolled in the company portal app to enroll their Mac OS. And it's telling them they need to update their device settings to be a compliant state so telling them they need to turn on device encryption and it gives them uh, the ability to click on check settings there to pull up the security and pri privacy section of the Mac and look at the firewall settings and here as the administrator of that device if it's BYOD they do have the ability to go ahead and start to turn that on and that's when you'll see if you've created a device configuration profile, which I'll show in another video, you can customize whatever messaging it is saying here to tell them where they can find their recovery key in the company portal app. And then they simply go ahead and restart the device to go ahead and encrypt it, and that'll encrypt. And as soon as that's detected, Intune checks in periodically. So once that's done, they'll be able to come back in and you'll be able to see their device here within the portal so that you know that it's in a compliant state and always if it's something that they just did you can always uh, sync on demand if you click on devices click on this and um, if it's if it's personally owned um, and this is one that I've actually unenrolled so you'll see this here it's going to be one, um, if it's personally owned or if it's corporate owned, it doesn't matter if they've had it labeled like that. You can still sync on demand and it'll check in to look and update all the settings. So if they just switched it, this will switch from non-compliant to compliant. That's everything I wanted to show for you guys today in this video. I'll be making some more videos around device restrictions, device feature profiles that you can push out as well too to help the user with these settings. If you guys have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them below. Please like and subscribe if you'd love to see more content in regards to Intune and Microsoft 365. Thanks, and have a great day.